two, one, two, one, two. My check, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, mic check, one, two, one, two. One, two, mic check, one, two, mic check, one. My check one two one two My check one two one two three I check one, two, one, two. Check one, one, two. Mic check one, two, one, two, one, two. Mic check one, two, one, two.
All right, Israel, let's stand up first, Jerusalem. Plead my cause. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpets down. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chafe before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them, for without cause they have hid for me. Their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction let him fall and my soul shall be joyful in the lord it shall rejoice in his salvation heavenly father the god of our forefather abraham isaac and jacob we come before you in the name of your son jesus the christ father god we ask father god you heal those who are sick in the midst of us father god those who are weak we ask you father god you strengthen their spirit through your son jesus the christ those who are sick, Father God, we ask for healing swiftly and quickly, Father God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. As bishops are about to teach thy word, Father God, we pray that you put your spirit on him, Father God, that thy word may go forth. And thy word, Father God, may affect a brother or a sister that they may repent. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We ask you, Father God, you be with the man that's gone out to war to teach thy word. That you've sent you angels, Father God. We ask you, Father God, you let, let no harm come to you, prophet, Father God. We ask you, Father God, that you protect us, keep us, and heal us, Father God, of all our weaknesses. Father God, for those of us, Father God, who are may go on to something, we ask you, Father God, that you put the joy, the joy of your son, Jesus Christ, in us, Father God, to your scriptures. Let the whole congregation say, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for the food and this strong drink. It's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray and thank thee. Amen. Oh, praise to the Most High. How are you brothers doing this Sabbath? 
All praises, sisters. How are y'all doing? Good. All praises to the Lord. We're going to talk about, well, the sisters got a pass today because today was going to be your day. It was. It was. But the news had to change the narrative. I've been hearing sisters calling uh, brothers B, uh, I don't know, I can't, B-I-T, Negroes, and stuff like that. All kind of stuff going on in the nation. So we're going to deal with that. Not today, though. So you sisters, I pray that you can repent. Those of you, you know who you know who you is that's doing that, calling your grown husband a bit. I'm sorry, a b i negro. Sorry, and you brothers that let that go on need to be ashamed of yourselves. All right, so today we're going to talk about red dragon, red dragon, red herring, red dragon, red herring. Yes, red herring is a bird. It is a bird, but that's not, we ain't talking about that kind of a bird today. I'm going to open up with the continuation of what I've been going through in the book of Revelation. So you new brothers, all you captains should know the breakdown of Revelation 12. Is, am I right? Am I right? No, oh, okay. Good, good, good. All right. All right. I want to know that you men are studying. Uh, I'm going to introduce what's going on in the news later on, but not in the beginning of the lesson. So you just hold on. We're going to talk about some things. So let's open up Revelation, the 12th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Who's reading for me? Officer Officer Tobias. Tobias. Okay, go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So this is the forefather, John the Revelator, in, in a prison camp on the island of uh, Patmos. It is a salt mine. This is, a, this is written around the year 96 A.D. 96 A.D. This, this, Jerusalem has already been destroyed. Jerusalem has already been destroyed. So read it again for me, please. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. So let's pause right there. This woman, this woman. Give me Jeremiah 6 and 2, please. Let's go there. Uh, To understand this parable. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. A lot of the book of Revelation, not everything, but I'd say about 85% of the book of Revelation is written in parable form, a metaphor, an allegory. In order to understand it, you must know the Old Testament precepts. All right, read that. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So the Lord considers us a beautiful and delicate woman. So this woman that it's referring to is not so much Mary. It's going beyond Mary. It's going, and her name wasn't Mary. Mary, as y'all know, is Greek. Her name was Miriam. All right. Um, Let's go back to Revelation 12 and 1 again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Okay, uh, there's an issue with the sound here. I'm getting messages, so my phone is blowing up. Atlanta, please, the sound, the sound. The sound. Are you on Periscope? Okay. All right, read that again. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, And the moon under her feet. So this woman, which represents the nation of Israel, it says she was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. The sun and the moon, the sun is the greater light. The moon is the lesser light when you read Genesis 1, 14. Let's get that real quick. Get that real quick. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Now, this is not the main precept I want to get to, but I just want to show you what Word is you. Genesis 1, let's get verse 16. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16. And God made two great lights. So what I want you to see is these two great lights. The word I want you to see is lights. Go ahead. The greater light to rule the day. The greater light to rule the day. 
and the lesser light to rule the night. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made he made the stars also. He made the stars also. So what I want y'all to see is that the sun is a great light, the moon is a lesser light. What does this light represent in Revelation Proverbs 6 23? Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. The law is light. The law is light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So what I want to pull out of that is where it says, and the law is light. So when we go back to Revelation 12 now, now we understand why Israel was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet. Represents God's law. All right. Read it again, Revelation 12 and 1, please. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Give me that in Genesis 37, verse 9. So the twelve stars, that should be easy to understand, represents the twelve tribes of Israel. So this woman with the crown of twelve stars represents the nation of the twelve tribes of Israel. Watch this. Genesis chapter 37 and verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. This is Joseph. Go ahead. And said, behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obscience to me. I mean, they bowed down to me. What verse was that? Verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? So this was the formation of the 12 tribes of Israel. So Joseph had a dream, and the dream represented each son as a star. So when we go back to Revelation, the 12th chapter now, we have a better understanding where it says, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars a crown of 12 stars let's read on now verse 2 revelation chapter 12 and verse 2 and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and she israel being with child cried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered let me tell you why we need we pain to be delivered Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. We were going over this, myself, Captain Isaac, uh, uh, Captain O'Shea. I don't know if you was there. We went over Matthew the first chapter, but many times when we explain Matthew the first chapter, we omit a main part. We generally go to Matthew 121, right? That's where we generally go. You brothers that teach on the street, you know what I'm talking about. But let's change it up a bit, and let's start to go. Let's begin at verse 16. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So Jacob was the father of Joseph. Now, for those of you, for those of you who are reading your four chapters a day, when you read the book of Luke, you'll find out that uh, that's, uh, what's her name? Mary, Miriam's genealogy in the book of Luke. Here in Matthew, it goes into Joseph's genealogy. So here it tells you that the father, Joseph's father, was Jacob. Let me show you this real quick. Give me this. Go to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and verse uh, 3. I just want to show you this. Matthew 3. Look at verse 23. I'm going to show you the difference here real quick before I, I'm, I'm sidetracking. I'm about to get back to the point in a moment, but that's just a side note. My Luke chapter 3, start at 23, read 23. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. So you see it says Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now, in Matthew, it said Jake, Joseph was the son of Jacob. What this Heli here is on Mary's side, 
Okay, Heli was Mary's father. So Joseph, which was the son-in-law of Heli. Some Bibles may have a little number there and it may say, or son-in-law of Heli. So that's just a side note for you teachers out there. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. So what you want to do when you're teaching, you want to pause there with Babylon. Why? Because Babylon was our slave masters. We were in captivity. We were in slavery in Babylon. So you want to just pause there for a second or two. Now let's read on. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. You want to pause right there too. You want the listener to understand what is happening with the nation of Israel. What has occurred? From Babylon to Christ are 14 generations. What occurred after Babylon in captivity? We had the what? Persian and Mede captivity. After the Persian and Mede captivity, we had what? The Greek captivity. After the Greek captivity was the Roman captivity. And who was born? Christ. Where are the Israelites? Under Roman domination. Let's read on. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Engaged to Joseph. Before they came together. Meaning before the wedding feast. That's what before they came together means. Before the wedding feast. Go ahead. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was found with child according to prophecy. That's what the Holy Ghost is making reference to there. Go ahead. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Why? Because it was a shame. For a woman to be pregnant before the wedding. You see, black people, Latin, y'all don't know about that now. Now you got baby mama drama. It's normal to be uh, promiscuous. It's normal to be, what is that thing Deacon Aitan said the other week? In the abysmal depth of degradation. It's normal to be filthy. So what? She's pregnant. It's all right. It was never all right for a woman to be pregnant without being married. But here... It happened. Read that verse again. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the, of the Lord appeared unto him. You got to think about it because somebody, I know some of you, your minds are in the abysmal, I love that, the abysmal depth of degradation. But why you got to put him away? Because of your father and my father make an agreement on a particular date to get married. And I find out your little grimy son was bumping and grinding with my daughter already. I'm mad as hell. I'm pissed off. See, but y'all don't know about that. You're black. You don't know. It's normal. It's normal lifestyle for us now. Read on. Verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. For that which is conceived in her is according to prophecy. Go ahead. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. Now, this is the point we wanted to get to. Why verse 21? Because remember said that the woman pained to be delivered. We were reading Revelation 12 and 2. Don't forget the thoughts. Stay with the conversation. Why do we pain to be delivered? Read it again, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. For he shall save his people from their sins. What did sin cause to happen? Back to verse 17, please. Don't forget the thought. Stay with the conversation. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. What was Babylon? Captivity, slavery. Go ahead. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ 
are 14 generations. So what happened during them 14 generations from Babylon to Christ? After the Babylonian captivity came the Persian Mede captivity. After the Persian Mede captivity came the Greek captivity. After the Greek captivity came the Roman captivity, wherein was born Christ. Verse 21 again. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So why do we need to be saved? Because we were in what? Captivity. Slavery. And this is what the average black Christian don't understand. It. They'll, they'll read this and just forget all the captivities recorded in verse 17. Okay? So as teachers, we want to emphasize chapter verse 17 here and jump down to verse 21. This is why we needed saving. So when we go back to Matthew, I mean Revelation, excuse me. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 2 again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 2. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Why were we crying? Because we were in captivity. Under who? Rome. We cried to be delivered. We were waiting for the Savior. Now the angel comes and tells Mary, you're going to bring forth a son. This is what you're going to call him. Because he's going to save his people. From what? Captivity. Why were we in captivity? Because of our sins. Verse 3. Verse 3. And, th and that relates to us today. Where are we today? Captivity. We pain to be delivered. We want to be delivered. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his heads. So this great red dragon. Let's go to Genesis 25. Let's get the understanding here. Genesis 25. Let's start at 21 through 25, please. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I'm getting messages. Slow down. Slow down. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggle together within her. And she says, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So a lot of people don't understand the word Genesis means beginnings. This is the beginning or the origin of two nations right here that we're reading about. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. That's us. Go ahead. And, and the elder shall serve the younger. So that's prophetic for the kingdom. It's prophesied that the elder child will serve the younger. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Not identical. Go ahead. And the first came out red. Now that's what we wanted to get to right there. That color stipulation of red. Because that's the first time in terms of complexion it was used in the Bible. Of course, prior to that, everybody looked like Adam was from the dust of the ground. Read on. All over like in hairy garments. And they called his name Esau. Mm -hmm. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So the first use of the word red here for a human being was upon Esau. So now, what about the term dragon? Give me Job 30 and 29. Job right. chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons. Stop. That's all we want right there. I'm a brother to dragons. That's what Job said. I am a brother to dragons. So dragons makes reference to man too. So when we go back to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 2 again. So now the color stipulation we got is what? Esau. Red. A brother to dragons. Mankind. What particular man is this dragon making reference to? Esau. The children of Edom, E-D-O-M. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. That's Esau. Having seven heads and ten horns, 
and seven crowns upon his head. So write this down and just go through the seven heads real quick. Greeks, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Britain. Those are the seven horns, seven heads, I'm sorry. Now the ten horns, which is also called the EU or ten common markets. Okay, I'm going to go through them. Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark, Ireland, England, and Greece. Let's go back. So hopefully y'all got that. Verse 3 again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. That's Esau. Having seven heads. Seven major empires. And ten horns. The ten common markets. And seven crowns upon his head. Because these were world. Y'all didn't get the names? Who didn't get the name? Raise your hand. <laughs> Don't say it, Bishop. All right. The seven horns or the, the ten heads? I'm getting all mixed. I see you got me all discombobulated up here now. All right, both. The seven heads. Greece. Rome. Y'all need to put it on a screen. Let's put a... Greeks. Rome. Spain. France. Germany, Russia, Britain. That's the seven heads. Seven world empires. Okay. The ten horns, also called the ten common markets, also called the EU. Belgium. I know what the problem is. B-E-L-G-I-U-M. Belgium. France. F-R-A-N-C-E. Germany, G-E-R-M-A-N-Y. Italy, I-T-A-L-Y. Luxembourg, oh, that one got you right there. L-U, I see, I'm looking at it because I can't spell either. L-U-X-E-M-B-U-R-G-X. H-H-H, Luxembourg. Berg. Netherlands, that's another long non-Negro word. N-E-T-H-E-R-L-A-N-D-S. Number seven is Denmark, D-E-N-M-A-R-K. Number eight, Ireland, I-R-E-L-A-N-D. You know we're going to go there soon, Ireland. We got a large uh, Israelite community there. Uh, nine, England, E-N-G-L-A-N-D. Number 10 is Greece, G-R-E-E-C-E. -E -E. Do we all have it? I knew that was the problem. I should have figured that thing out. Spelling. Wait, wait, D, do you have it? Oh, okay. All right. Write it in your Bibles. Let's put it in your Bibles. Oh, yeah, right there. Right there. Oh, yeah, for England, it got United Kingdom. Okay, same thing. But that's it right there. All praises. Let's let that sit on the screen. Because I know some of them lying. They ain't all got it. They, oh, and y'all spell Luxembourg wrong. Black people. Luxembourg. Wow. Who wrote this? Did OC do this? Probably, probably, yeah. This this guy. All right. Captain OC, we love you. We pray for you. All right. So where are we at now? We are in 12 and verse 3. Okay, we finished three. Now we're in four. Who's reading for me? Let me see. Who's reading? Tobias. Oh, Tobias is reading. Okay, Tobias. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So it says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So we understood already that the stars, remember there were 12 stars. So it said his tail drew the third part 
Okay, the third part, when you divide it up, you, that would be four, four, and four. So you got Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and that fourth, remember, there was remnants of the northern kingdom amongst us. So write that down. Y'all know I'm not good at math, but that little bit, I know. His, ta- his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So there was Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and remnants of the others. That's why in John 4, you read about the Samaritan women, which was of Ephraim. In Luke, you read about the, what's her name? Uh, Anna of the tribe of Asher, um, so forth and so on. Everybody with me so far? All righty then. It says, and they cast them to the earth, captivity. And the woman, which was ready to, to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Give me that in Matthew 2.13. It's going to explain part of the dragon. It's going to explain the woman. And it's going to also explain the child. Those three things will be evidenced in Matthew 2, verse 13. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother. The young child, as we know, is Christ. Go ahead, and his mother is Mary. And flee into Egypt. Flee into the nether parts of Egypt. Go ahead. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Let's, anybody got a Bible dictionary? Anybody got a Bible dictionary? Can we look up Herod? Herod was, worked under Rome. I want to find out Herod's nationality other than Rome, because we know he was Roman, but it, gives, it stipulates something with him, if I'm not mistaken. Herod, H-E-R-O-D. Got it? Help Her- Tobias. Herod, Idumian ruler. Of- I do, that's all we want, Idumian ruler. Now, you might be confused. What's Idumian? Can we look up Idumian? What is this Idumian? Because that's how Esau play games with their road scholars. They change the pronunciation and words around. I do mean, or I do me up. Let's look it up. I, I do me a, pertaining to Edom. See that? I do me a, pertaining to Edom. Go ahead. Greek and Roman name for Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. That's Esau. Okay, that's Esau. So that's why at the beginning of the chapter, we went to Genesis 25 to explain the red dragon was Esau. And now we've got further verification here in verse 4. Was that verse 4 we were reading? Um, right, let's go back to Revelation now. So now, now well, I'm, about, I'm about to show you something here in this verse. Revela- Revelation 12 and 4 again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be, to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this great red dragon is Esau, Idumia. The Roman Empire. So what is God calling them? The devil. That's what he's calling. Wait, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to just jump the gun here. Go to verse 9. Verse 9. Cause y'all, oh, he's being racist. No, not at all. Read that. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. Called what? Called the devil. So we're not saying Rome, Idumia, is the devil because we have any... Personal hatred has nothing to do with that. It's strictly biblical. Strictly biblical. And this is what the scholars have been hiding from us for centuries. Go back to verse 5 now. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 5. And she brought forth a man child. That's Christ. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Give me the precept for that in Acts 1 and 9. Acts 1 verse 9. And her child was caught up to heaven. Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Read. 
Verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You know why they stood there gazing up? Because they'd never seen a man fly like that. They said, this dude, you ever see Neo in the Matrix when he bends down and goes, poo? So they're like, what the hell? They are looking at the Son of God ascend into heaven, into a chariot. So they were gazing. So these two angels said, what? Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So that was the point. So we go back to Revelation 12 again. And that was the bottom of verse Five and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So now we are at verse 6. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now John reiterates this later on in the chapter, but I'm just going to touch on it right now. We'll get into a little more detail. So when it says, and a woman fled into the wilderness, this stills go with uh, Matthew 2.13. Remember what the angel said? Flee where? Egypt. Egypt. What does that mean? Deeper into the land of Ham. Go deeper in there. That's what he was telling them. So when it says, and a woman fled into the wilderness, it's talking about Africa. Deeper in there. First, real quick, give me the map of Africa. I sent, who, who am I talking to now? Over there, Alicia. Put up the map of Africa for us. All right. Can you zoom into Israel? Right there. Can you zoom into Israel? I see Jordan. I see Egypt. I see Israel. Can you zoom in? Okay. Does everybody right under Syria, right along the Mediterranean Sea? Do y'all do y'all see Israel? All right. So now. Remember when the angel said, flee into Egypt. You could walk from Israel into Egypt. Today you can't because they built that Suez Canal to cut it off. That's the devil that did that thing. So you could walk. So what happened was, what? When they said they fled into the wilderness, they went through Egypt. Because from Egypt, you can get through to Sudan. You can get down to Ethiopia. You can also go towards Libya, Algeria. You can go down to the, uh, Niger, Chad, Mali, so forth and so on. Now watch this. Somebody may say, well, how do you know they went further into Africa? Here's some precepts. Give me Zechariah, please. Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3. And keep that map there on the board. Zephaniah chapter 3 in verse 10. Because you get some dumb Israelite camps out there. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 10. They don't know the Bible, neither do they know history. Because I remember one, this one stupid camp. They always eat chicken while they're teaching. And they all overweight, all overweight. Uh, somebody said, well, why do you say that we're not from Africa if, like they say in Jamaica, a large portion of Jamaicans come from the Ashanti? So they said, that, isn't that a tribe in Africa? And they're like, um, um, hand me another chicken, brother. Listen, you, you got the devil on you. Shut the hell up. They curse them out and hang up the phone. These dudes are stupid as hell. So read that. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my, sup, my suppliance. Uh-huh. So look. If you, I don't know if, uh, can you get closer in on Ethiopia? Can you get a little closer? If y'all can see Addis Ababa right there where it says Ethiopia. Can you zoom in a little better or no? That's far as it go. Okay. There's the Blue Nile right around there. It's, there's a circular form there and it connects to the, what they call the Nile or the White Nile is technically called. And so from Ethiopia, it connects to the White Nile, which is the Nile that everybody talks about. That Nile goes from through Egypt, Sudan, and I want you to see in the Sudan there's an area called Juba. Eh, I'll leave that for another class. Juba goes down towards, raise it up a bit so I can see. Raise it up, raise it up. You have Tanzania, which also touches on the Republic of Congo. Okay, uh, it goes down. You got, what's that right there? Yeah, Malawi. Oh, under Ethiopia, you have Uganda. That's where we were at. Okay, and that river goes down towards Mozambique. Okay, 
which is right there at South Africa. Say it again. They're fighting about the dam, yes. Correct, right. Uh, Okay, so read that again. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 10. So now it says from beyond the, the rivers of Ethiopia. So my point was this. When we fled into Africa, we fled along those rivers, but we also went further past that. We went towards Niger and Chad, Nigeria, Mali, Mauritania. We went towards Guinea. Primarily, we know about the West Coast, but we also went down towards Mozambique. That's what I want you to see. This, this is what you, all you got to do. Find out where did they get the slaves from. Why? Because the slaves, we fit Deuteronomy 20. Find out where they got them from. They did not just get them from, uh, give me a name, uh, Ghana. They didn't just get them from Ghana. That was not the only place. Okay, we did a class about South Africa where they got slaves from Mozambique. That was little known. Okay, so all these various places, when we fled into the wilderness, guess what we did? Not only did some of us set up our own empires, some of us joined. Give me that precept. I forgot. I think it's Psalms 106. It says we did not destroy the nations. Yeah, who knows what that is? Yeah, give me that. Now, this is talking about when we uh, left out of Egypt, but I'm going to use the precept to show you what we did when we went back deeper into Africa. Who got it for me? You got it, Tobias? Uh, Psalms 106, verse 34. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 106 and verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. This is what I want y'all to see. We were mingled among them and learned their works. That's why we be getting on Levi with voodoo and all that. Where they get that from? Africa. Mingling amongst the tribes over there, learning all that hocus pocus, mumbo jumbo. And the language that we adopted. Because they'll say some of them was Muslim, some of the slaves. And you have committed community try to use that argument. That argument is null and void when you compare it to the writings of the Bible. We will mingle among them and learn their works. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right, all right. Uh, Did you finish that, Zephaniah 3? I'm going to read 10 to 13. Come on. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Those are awesome. Remember, pride is when we leave the commandments of God. Go ahead. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Mm-hmm. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. And you really see that in Africa. They are in a, a lot of them are afflicted and poor. Everybody ain't poor, but the large majority, afflicted and poor people. I'm talking about our people. That's there. Go ahead. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Why? Or how? They got to learn. They have to be taught. And that's what we're doing. That's our mission. Go ahead. The remnant of Israel. Now it's naming them. It's naming who they are. The remnant of Israel. Go ahead. Shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. So it's giving you a map. What we just read in Zephaniah 3, 10 through 13 gives us a map of where a remnant of the children of Israel are. So for anybody to jump up and say, there's no Israelites over there, you're an idiot. Just be quiet. You don't know the Bible. Give me the next priest. Give me Zechariah 8 and 7. Hey, Alicia, find me a map of uh, North America or a global map of America and Africa. on it. I want it on the same picture. Yeah. World man. Hey, hey, Bishop, right now, you know, no, no, they're just jealous. Right now, I don't know later on, but right now, IUIC is the only camp Bish- um, Mosa is using to do this, to actually go to those places and wake up the people. Because we believe the scriptures. What are we going to do? Go by what men say or go by what the scriptures say? We're going to go by what the scriptures say. Hey, didn't Peter say that we ought to obey God yes, rather, rather than, than man. man? Exactly. You found that force of Cilicia? Let's look at it. Any day now. 
any day now. All right, world map. Okay, I didn't need all the I just need the map. Can we get it on one solid paper? One, not paper, or a screen, a shot, or you're going to have to go side to side? Okay, all right, leave it right there then. Uh, where's Africa at? Right there? Okay, thank you. All right, so read that for me, uh, Officer Tobias. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 7. Pay close attention. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This is for another one for the idiots that say Israel's not on the other side of the world. Read. Behold, I will save my people from the east country. The east country is Africa. Go ahead. And from the west country. The west country is America. This is the western hemisphere. So it's talking about saving Israelites from the east and the west. So on the, on the west, you got North America, you got Canada, you got Central and South America. On the east, you got Africa. What's above that in Africa? You got the UK. Okay. Everybody understand that? So God is giving us a map of where his people have been scattered in slavery. All right. So let's go back to Revelation 12 and 6, please. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. So the woman fled into Africa. Where she hath a place prepared of God. Where she hath a place prepared of God. That place Give me that in Hosea 1 and 10, that place. What is that place prepared of God? Hosea 1 verse 10. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. Yet the number of Israel, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in a place where in it was... The, in the what? In the place. In the place. In the place. In the place. This place right here is America. Go ahead. Where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Because the teaching started here in America. It didn't start over there in Africa. It did not start in the UK. Okay, it started in America. It didn't start in the Caribbean islands. It started here in the United States of America. So that's the place. Go back to Revelation 12 and 6, please. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 6. And a woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So in this place would be fed for three and a half days. 350 years. This is how you do the math. Write this down. Write this down. Revelation chapter 12. You're going to do 1,260 divided by 360 days because that's how much the years were back in the, in the day. It equals 3.5, which is 350. Hip talk, which equals 350 years. So 1260, 1,260 days divided by 3. 60, 360, not 365, that's a new thing, 360, you get three and a half, okay, so in hip talk, as we go down, it's 350 years, that's how long we're going to be nourished here, verse 7, verse 7, and there was war in heaven, I know some of y'all got your calculators, because you're like, I can't count, I can't spell, and I can't count, damn, damn the devil, you're going to be all right, brothers. You're going to be all right. <laughs> We're in verse 7. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. So, well, read on, read on. Read down to 9. Verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So what I want you to see here about there was war in heaven. Now, Christian commentaries will tell you that there's going to be an angelic battle in the sky, and you're going to see Michael with his angels, and Satan, Lucifer, is going to come out of the ground and fight. Uh, that's not what it's talking about. What is this talking about? Watch this. Give me Daniel 12 and 1. And when it says Michael, it means Michael. Don't go, oh, that's really Christ. No, Michael means Michael. 
That's one of the four beasts in the heavens. He's one of the four archangels. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at the time shall Michael. And at that time. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. So what time period is that talking about? That is what we're called, what the world calls World War III, or the Bible calls Armageddon. Watch this. Here's the precept. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 13. Because remember it says there was war in heaven, and the Satan and his dragons were cast out. So what we want to find out, who is the dragon that fought in his angel? Remember we already read, we already cleared up. The dragon was who, brothers? Esau. So it should be clear that this dragon here is talking about Esau. And now we're going to prove it. The devil that the Bible speaks of. Give me that. Second Ezra 13. Let's start at verse 1. Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 1. And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. When he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. This is talking about Christ. Go ahead. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. And after this I beheld, lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. When it talks about came out of the sea, it's not talking about coming out of the Atlantic Ocean. Remember in Genesis 1 and verse 6 and 7 where God says he, div he divided the waters from the waters. He divided the waters from the above the firmament and he divided the waters under the firmament. Y'all familiar with that? All right, so the waters above the firmament we call space. So that's the sea that the man came from. Go ahead, read on. Verse 6, but I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. Verse 10, But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he has cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So now as you keep reading, Ezra asked the angel to break that down. He said, this vision I don't understand. Jump down to verse 25. The angel gives the understanding of the vision. Verse 25. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same is he whom God the highest hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the in, her, in, interpretation. This is the interpretation. Read. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. This is talking about Christ. Go ahead. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, 
and one realm against another. So this is letting you know when Christ returns, it's going to be nations fighting nations. He's, Christ is coming. He's going to interrupt that. Watch what it says. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the sign shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared. That's the proof right there that it's Christ. Go ahead. Whom thou sawest as a man ascending. Watch this. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So every man is going to leave the battle they have one against another. So he's letting you know when Christ returns, there's going to be war on earth. Go ahead. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of the mountain Sion, and Sion shall come and shall be shewed to all men, being prepared and builded. That's talking about Israel. Go ahead. Like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands, and this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith. They shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame that he destroy. And he shall destroy them. And sh he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto fire. So now let's go back to Revelation 12. Now we have a more descriptive understanding of what Revelation 12, 7 through 9 is talking about. Read Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So this is uh, Esau's seven empires, and all their allies are going to fight against Christ and his angels. Go ahead. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. No more rulership for them upon the earth. That's what it's making reference to about heaven. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. Esau is going to be cast out. Go ahead. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So when we call them the devil and Satan, it's not based on some personal interaction that we had with them, that we don't like them. It ain't no prejudice thing like that. No, it's because the Bible says this thing right here. That's why we're saying it. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. You know what's funny about this? What ain't funny, but I love it so. After Esau goes down, the kingdom is the Lord's. That's right. That's right. So for anybody to think that this kingdom ruling is Ishmael, the Arabs, you're stupid as hell. You are an idiot. And you need to leave crack alone. Crack is whack. Crack is bad. Leave it alone. Read that again. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Hey, hey, hey give me that precept in Obadiah where it says, After Esau, the kingdom shall be the Lord's. It might be the last verse. 21, read that for me. This, this goes with this. Obadiah, verse 21. And, and this is saying the same thing as 2 Ezra 6 and 9. Go ahead. And saviors shall come upon, up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. See that after Esau goes down, the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's what we just read here in Revelation 12. Okay, after this great red dragon goes down, the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Everybody with me on that thing? All right. Let's go back to Revelation 12. What verse you was at, Officer Tobias? Verse 10. Okay. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, Day and night. So this accuser, this great red dragon, is also called the accuser. So now, yes, spiritually, you can go to Job 1 to talk about Satan going before the Lord. But it's going beyond that because Esau does the same thing. Every time you cut on the news, they are accusing us as being the top murderers. The evil, we're the major evil in the earth. Okay? Anything you cut on, oh, a negro, up, oh, a negro, up, oh, another negro did this. 
Why, like Esau is so innocent. But they accuse us day and night. And they accuse us of not being the people of God. Like it said in Hosea 1 and 10 where it says, and in the place where it said you are not my people, that's what Esau constantly pushes that. In the same time that they're calling us Negroes, they do movies about World War II. Save the Jews. Save the Jewish people. Save the Jewish people. 666 Jewish people. Save them. They're God's people. You're a Negro. Negro. Let's do your, look at your movies. Adultery, fornication, Negroes, Negroes. That's what they do. Right. Right, they call us wogs in Britain. Wogs. W-O-G-Z. A little wogs. No wogs allowed. It means nigger. Uh, let's, where are we at? Verse 11. Verse, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Now that's a heavy, heavy precept right there. See, we can't overcome on our own. We cannot. That's why the apostle said, apostle Paul said, the good that I would do, that I do not. He said there's always an internal battle between righteousness and unrighteousness, between good and evil within, trying to keep the mind and spirit disciplined, a constant battle, constant struggle. Like he says in Galatians 5, I think it's verse 22 down. He says these are contrary one to another. Give me that. You Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Galatians 5, uh, find it for me. 17, read that. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the... I want the, the part about these are contrary one to another. It's right there. Oh. Galatians, 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Look around 17 down to 20 somewhere. I'm not looking at it. So I'm... Oh, 17. 17. Galatians chapter 5. Hold on. Oh, gosh. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Come on. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. That's what I wanted. Go ahead. And the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So Paul was talking about that constant eternal struggle within, within your mind, within your soul. You want to do the righteousness of God with your mind, but that flesh always wants to be pleased. Okay, so it's a constant struggle, constant battle. So when we go back to Revelation 12, verse 11, this gives us a better understanding now. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him. They overcame this great red dragon, which deceiveth the whole world. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the sacrifice of Christ. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. The word of our testimony is, Psalm, give me the precept, Psalms 132, verse 11 and 12, please. What is the word of their testimony? I always stress this because I keep, I'm going to talk about it in a minute, right after we read this. Psalms chapter 132 and verse 11. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of, the, of thy body will I set upon thy throne. The fruit of thy body is Christ. Christ came from the loins, the sperm of David. Read it again. Verse 11. The Lord have sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Go ahead. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. You see that? If thy children, that's us will keep my covenant, here's the point, and my testimony that I shall teach them. We gotta, we're only going to overcome with God's testimony that he teaches us about his son. What's the testimony? The verse above it says, uh, of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. That's letting us know Christ came from the sperm of David. That's where he came. We got to follow that testimony. So verse 12 again. If thy children will keep my commandment. No, nope, it doesn't say that. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Talk about the kingdom of heaven. So we got to follow the testimony God teaches us about his son. So you may ask, what about my testimony? 
Guess what? Let me tell you something. Everybody in here got a personal testimony. Everybody. But I'm going to say something right now. Your testimonies, our testimonies, is garbage. I'm going to explain why I say that. Because some of the women are upset. Why my testimony got to be garbage? Your testimony is garbage. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Give me Hebrews. Watch this. Hebrews 9, verse 6. Everybody, let me tell you my testimony. We ever go to church and they always, some old lady goes up there. I didn't give you my testimony. You don't give a damn about your testimony. It's garbage. I'm going to explain why I said that. Some of the sisters are going, you're just so mean. Why are you saying that? That ain't right. This is why I say that. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. Hebrews. You, when, you, when you give a testimony, you are testifying something. Watch, watch. You got it for me, Tobias? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of a necessity be the death of the testator. When you have a testament, a testament is something testified. It's, see, this is going into the setting up and establishing of the New Testament. Which comes the word testify or testimony. Read it again. Watch. For where a testament is... There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. In order for your testimony or testament to be solidified, you must die. Damn. This is why the New Testament stands firm. Watch this. Go ahead. For a testament is a force. For a testimony is a force. After men are dead. After you die. Go ahead. Otherwise, it is of no strength and at all. While the testator lives. It's Living. no use while you're alive. Why? What can you, Let's say you got this testimony. I almost died and I gave my life to the Lord. What could happen tomorrow? You become a Muslim. You could change your mind. Them brothers and sisters all had, that left out of this truth, they all had testimonies. Their testimonies is garbage because they all changed their doctrines. That's what I'm saying. Our testimonies is garbage. Some of y'all going to get an attitude and say, to hell with this Bible. Bishop, you know that scripture, when you read this, what scripture comes to my mind? The scripture is talking about when a man turned from his righteous way and returned to vomit. And returned to vomit. Right. Most right. I say, I will not remember your righteousness. Exactly, exactly. You can be in this for 20 years. That's right. You left it, you turned to vomit. Most I say, I'm not going to remember. Right. I'm not going to remember it. So it's, your testimony means nothing. Exactly. So your testimony is of no force while you're alive. It's garbage. That's why I don't be listening to y'all when y'all be talking. Can I give you my testimony? I'll be like, in my spirit, I'll be like, la, 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 la. <laughs> Nobody can hear you. If you remember last year, we did the um, I, why I joined IEYC thing with all the nonsense going on. Guess what? Some of the people left. Right. They left right after that thing. See that? So their testimony is garbage. All our testimonies is garbage because we're still alive. Okay? So let's go back now. Revelation 12, we're in verse 11 again. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So the word of their testimony is the testimony God teaches us about his son. Go ahead. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They put we this group will put the truth of God before their own lives. Go ahead, verse twelve. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Now this is verse. This is very heavy here. So. The Spirit of Christ is letting us know here in verse 12. He says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. Talking about this great red dragon having great wrath. Why? Because he knows he has a short time. How does he know he has a short time? He has scholars. Let me tell you something. YouTube and social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, those are measuring platforms for this truth. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Esau knows this truth has been going out. They are examining our understanding, our faithfulness, and our zeal to determine where they're at time-wise. 
This is why now they say, listen, we got to get them off of YouTube, shut it down. They are getting many believers, converts are coming in through that platform. And they set that up just to monitor. And I use, I'll say that they say, many people say they did it to monitor black people. Yes, they did. But at the end of the day, the monitoring of black people, first and foremost, is regarding this truth. They don't care if you're in a comedic community. You can be a chemite, comedic, whatever, till you turn blue in the face. He don't give a damn. That's not going to make no significant change in the earth. But they said, the Bible there? Because they got this Bible in all their courthouses. And they have scholars. And their job is to study this book. Every president have, has a, what do they call them? A counselor. A, a spiritual advisor, right? A, that's the word. A spiritual advisor in terms of biblical continuity. Where we at prophetically. Esau is the devil, but he knows this Bible is true. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. What verse did we leave off at? Verse 13. Go ahead. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So after Christ died and resurrected, that's when Rome really got down on us. Now watch this. Yes, go ahead. You know what's so heavy, Bish? What, what you just said go over a lot of blood's head. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. A lot of you underestimate Esau. A lot of you are. You think Esau, Esau is not stupid. Last week, I make a comment in the radio show. I said, when you look at Esau government, the only way Esau kingdom is where they are is because they all agreed. What I mean by that? Starting with the police officer, going all the way up to the president of the United States. They all agree. When you talk about Democrat, Republican, listen, do not believe in that. They all agree. That's why their kingdom stand. Remember what I said? A kingdom that's divided cannot stand. It cannot stand. So whatever you see when Esau is doing to us, as a people, guess what? They all end it together. You know what Esau is good at? You playing good cop and bad cop. Esau is really good at that. And some of you fall for that. Like democracy, Democrat and Republican, that's playing good cop and bad cop. But guess what? They all end it together. That's how the kingdom survive. You don't think it's you think it's us reading this book. It's us reading about the 12 tribes. You don't think it's put two and two together. So like, wait a minute. Okay, these 12 tribes, what are they? They die off? No. It's all know who they are. It's all know we are the 12 tribes. You don't think they know? They're not going to tell you, though. It's all know. It's all not stupid. They study. That's his dream. Exactly. Just like Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Esau was able to interpret every portion until it got to his destruction. <laughs> he understood everything else, but that portion he's confused about. I'm going to show you what Deacon uh, Malachi said is correct. Uh, look at Isaiah 32. This is a side note. Side note. When he said they all in it together. Because you may be saying, well, I know some liberals. And liberals are for black people. They do many things, liberals do many things for black people. Look at Isaiah 32 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 7. Uh, let's start verse 5. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. Notice what the Bible calls liberals vile. Why? Because a liberal person says, I love black people. We will set up the United uh, Negro, what is that called? Yeah, college fund. That may seem good on the surface, but it's meant to keep us docile and under the influence of Negroism, for lack of better words. Meaning what? In that state of confusion so that we will never wake up to the truth of who we are. That's the United Negro College Fund. And liberals love donating money to that and other black causes, which keeps us black. Just read on. Verse 6, for the vile person will speak villainy and their heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. To practice hypocrisy because liberals will be the same one to say, I'm against the Republicans. 
I'm against the Democrats. I'm against the conservatives. I'm liberal. The Bible says they're hypocrites. They're all working collective. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor. Right, like welfare. That's a device to destroy the poor. Let's divide the family. Okay, black woman, we'll give you public assistance, housing, food stamps. Just get rid of your man. And black woman, oh, they love us. They're so liberal. Oh, God. There's a plot behind everything they do. Go ahead. With lying words. With lying words. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when you speak right. They got lying words for you. Go ahead. But the liberal deviseth liberal things. And by their liberal things shall he stand. All right. So let's go back to Revelation 12. What verse are we in, Tobias? Uh, I think to what verse 12. Verse. Uh, verse 13. 13? Yes, sir. Let me hear it. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So now what is it saying? It says, as time grows shorter and shorter, this great red dragon will persecute the Israelites. That's what he's saying. It gets some more detail later on in this chapter. Go ahead. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, and she... Not and, it's a that. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and a half a time, from the face of the serpent. Now, verse 14 is just repeating verse 6. So remember when it says, And a woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there. Notice this, a thousand, two hundred, and three score days. He takes it up again in verse 14, but he gives a little more detail here in verse 14, and we're going to go through it. Now your mind is going to start to click for some of you now. Verse 14 again. Verse 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Stop. And to the woman. We know that the woman is Israel. It says we're given two wings of a great eagle. Who was chasing the Israelites that made us flee? Rome. What was their symbol? The eagle. Let's look at that. Deuteronomy 28. We're going to start at 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. So the symbol of Rome was the eagle. Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. They spoke Latin, L-A-T-I-N. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Mm -hmm. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. They colonized us. Go ahead. Which also shall not leave, their, leave thee either corn, wine, or oil. Or the increases of thy kind. Kind means cattle. Go ahead. Or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee. Go ahead. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down. Wherein thou hast trusted, trusted throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So we were under Roman persecution for seven years. They besieged Jerusalem. Let's go back to Revelation 12. Actually, give me Luke 21. Let's go there first before we get back to Revelation. So what we're going to do is compare Deuteronomy 28, 49 to 53, with Luke 21, verse 20 to 24. Christ made mention of this thing. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye, and when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So what armies was Christ talking about? The Roman armies. The Roman armies. What verse you at? Verse 21. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. See that? Then let them which are in Judea flee 
to the mountains. What did the revelation say? It said the woman fled into the wilderness. Where did the angel tell Joseph to take Mary and Christ? Egypt. So it's giving you the direction right there. So there should be no confusions in your mind. Read that again. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Mountains of Africa. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Mm -hmm. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. So he's saying to you Israelites that are outside the country, don't come back. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. What is he talking about? What we just read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 49, down. Rome had to besiege Jerusalem. We had to fall into cannibalism. As you kept reading Deuteronomy 20, it tells you we started to eat the flesh of our children because there was no food for seven years. That's what we did. That's what we were resorted to. Read that again. Verse 22. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Oh, side note. I got another side note. You know how you be teaching and something just pop into your mind? When you read, this is a side note. So in your notes, just write side note. Sidebar. When you look at Galatians 3, watch this. Galatians 3. This came up in Uganda. Galatians chapter 3. Because they gave us a challenge with a Christian. Uh, Galatians 3 and verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So the curse is Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 through 16. So the brother was asking, well, it says here Christ redeemed us from the curse. Why are we still oppressed? So I said when you go to Luke 21, go back now. This is where we was at. Verse 22, Christ gave you in secret. Read that. Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. That's why Christ said, remember in Matthew 5, he said, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy but to fulfill. So what is he saying? Everything Moses prophesied that would happen to the children of Israel must happen. So yes, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, which is this oppression. But guess what? There's a time period. Everything must come to pass. We just, the slave ships just happened. Okay. Now we're starting to wake up. You can see the curses are being, uh, uh, what's going to be the word? Reverse. Lifted off of us. And then we're going to go over that in another class. Everybody understand me? Everybody with me so far? Yes, All right. Back to Luke 21. Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. So why woe unto them that are with child? Because we were forced to do what? Cannibalize our children. That's what it says in Deuteronomy 28, 49 down to 57, if I'm not mistaken. When you keep reading, it tells you we had to eat our children because there was no food for many, many years. Read on. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites that stay back to fight like we had the zealots. They said, we're not leaving Jerusalem. We're going to fight Rome. It says they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. So you Israelites that didn't run. You Israelites that didn't get killed. You Israelites that stayed to fight and got caught. You were led away captive into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Rome shall take over the land. The white man shall take over the land. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentile rule be fulfilled. Let's go back to Revelation now. I hope I'm not going too fast. Revelation 12 and verse 14 again. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Why a great eagle? Because Rome, whose symbol was the eagle, chased us. Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. Where did we flee to? Africa. Deeper into Africa. Go ahead. Into her place. Her, into her, What is the place there? America. America. That's why we went to Hosea 1 verse 10. And in the place... Where it was said unto them, you are not my people, 
That's the accuser of the brethren. There it shall be said, you are the sons of the living God. So we're living Bible prophecy. So it says, into her place, go ahead. Where she is nourished for Stop. a... Stop. Where she is nourished, go ahead. For a time. For a time, singular. And times. And times, plural. And half a time. So that's three and a half. This is why when you jump up above, notice the wording here. It says that they should feed her, nourish her there, a thousand two hundred and three score days. That thousand two hundred and three score days, one two, one thousand two hundred and sixty, divided by three sixty three six zero equals three and a half. That three and a half back down to verse fourteen. Now, I hope I'm not going too fast. Revelation it says where she is nourished. See that word nourished? That's the same thing it said that they should feed her in verse six. It's saying the same thing. Where she, so back to 14 now. Where she is nourished for a time, that's one, times, that's two, and a half. That's three and a half, 3.5, three and a half. From who? From the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent. So it's saying the white man would nourish us for 350 years. That's Deuteronomy. Here it comes. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Here's the evidence prophetically. Everything we've gotten here, the white man has given it to us. He is our mother, our father here. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. This is the proof that we shall be fed here. I'm in verse 6. We sh that they should feed her there 1,203 score days. Saying the same thing in verse 14. Uh, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half of time. From the face of the serpent. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, food, and in thirst, water, and in nakedness, clothing, and in want of all things, education, religion, whatever you want, medicine. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So it's telling us there, Moses used the word enemies there in Deuteronomy 28. Christ used another term here to John. He said we would be nourished from the serpent. Who is that serpent? Jump up to verse 9. Don't get it twisted. Who is that serpent? Verse 9 in Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. What's that word? Serpent. Go ahead. Called the devil and Satan. So who's nourishes, nourishing us? The devil is nourishing us here. Satan is nourishing us here. The serpent is nourishing us here. Our enemies is nourishing us here in America. Let's go back. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So the serpent cast out of his mouth out of his mouth. We want to pause right there. His mouth is what, brothers? What's his mouth? His media. Uh, Officer Alicia, give me the Gil Noble video. This is about the media. Pay very close attention to this because we might not understand. When we watch this video, it's very short. It's going to help us understand why they got rid of Bill Cosby who wanted to purchase NBC. It's going to explain to us why they got rid of Bob Johnson who owned BET. Because remember, under BET, there was a black uh, news broadcast. The first thing the white man did is to get rid of that news broadcast. He's going to explain why. In our prison. Turn it up so we, we can hear. About what's going Turn it back. We're roll it back to the beginning. Going. Turn. Roll it back. I want everybody to listen real good. Us in our 
that affects and infects us in, our, in what we think about what's going on, what we're told about what's going on around the world. Let me give you an example that will reinforce my answer. In every newsroom at the beginning of the day, there's a person who's called an assignment editor. They come in at sunup, and they look at mail that has come in, and they look at the uh, wire services and the internet, and they look at the barrage of television screens. And between that, they begin to assemble the assignment schedule for the day. What's going to be covered, and who is going to cover it as the reporters come in. I've been through this. So when you show up for work, your first stop is the assignment desk. And they say, Noble, you're going to go here. This is who's going to be representing the mayor. And this is who you'll be talking to, that kind of stuff. Later on in the morning, the assignment editor meets with the producers and the writers. And they sit and they talk over a, a, an oval table about the assignments and what's going to be on the evening news. And they make... Their comments. Well, we're we going to cover that story again. I mean, we've already given that story. No, no. Let's let's move it down, or let's shave it to just a you know a thirty second voiceover. Overwhelmingly, the people who make these decisions are neither black, nor brown, nor red, nor yellow, and they're talking about coverage of a world that is, for the most part, black, brown, red, and yellow. On a network level, it's even more severe because you have these news bureaus all around the world who are controlled and captained and run by people who are neither black, brown, red, or yellow, who determine what the reporters in these bureaus go and cover. And when they bring back the report, then it is wired into the newsrooms and the head offices here in New York City. And then they decide to what's going to be laid in. Now, mind you, the network newscast is a half hour. They've got about seven or eight bureaus around the world, not to mention a dozen or so in the United States. All of this information is coming into this narrow funnel. Who determines not only what gets in the funnel, but all that extra stuff that doesn't? And what I'm saying is that the people who make that decision are neither black, nor brown, nor red, nor yellow, or have they had any educational background that tells the truth about the people who are black, or brown, or red, or yellow. So there's a presumption that we're getting the skinny on what happened today. That's not so. Misinformation instead. Yes, I think misinformation is indeed a weapon of mass destruction. And then, of course, there is the issue of self-perceptions and another issue pertaining to the, the perceptions of others based on this misinformation. Exactly. I mean, I went through school and I was proud that I was able to commit to memory the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, <laughs> our forefathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty, <laughs> dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, all Yes. And what and about the I word men? Huh? <laughs> what about the word men? There you go. There yes. you go. Not a, but I swallowed that. And it's burned in my, my brain, all of us, proud of it. Never once was it questioned, you know. Never once do we really focus on the beginnings of this country. And there's a woman now who I've given a lot of attention to because I think her thesis is right, Dr. Joy Leary. And she's been talking about the long-lasting impact of the slave experience on the victims of that, post-traumatic slave syndrome. I think that that's something that needs to be really looked at. And white people, as well as black, need to look at that before there's any help. So the journalist has a lot of legwork, preparatory legwork, in order to really fulfill the precepts of effective journalism. And it's not happening in my judgment. Well, all righty then. Yes, sir. Go ahead. <sighs> what he said went over a lot of people's heads. Let me tell you something. What he said, that's IUIC mission to stop what he said. That's our number one mission. And guess what? Esau is not going to take it laying down. What he's saying is, 
Listen, you got people, like I was saying, I was telling Bishop early uh, in the back. Do you know that a lot of stuff you think is not you who's thinking it? In other words, the media is telling you how to think, what to eat, what to wear, when to go to sleep, when to wake up, where to go to work, what type of paycheck you're going to get every week. It's all come from the media. That's what he's saying. He, then he said, these people, they're not you. They're not the same color as you. They're, they're, listen, they cannot relate it to you. They don't know you struggle. They don't know you history. They don't know nothing about you. But they're making decisions for you. Guess what? We try to stop that. Esau is not going to take a lane down. We try to change the mindset of the people. When you see your wife calling you something as a B, ne, B, a, B a nigger, that's not coming from her. That's come from the white man. That's what she, it's not a word, it's not her thought. It's not her that's thinking. Esau is thinking for her. She's telling you what she learned about you from Esau. How Esau perceive you, that's what your wife is telling you you are. They tell her to think. That's, that's just like what you just brought out in Deuteronomy 28 and 48. For the want of all things. That, that includes your, 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 your frame of thought. Your frame of thought. You actually depend on your enemy for that frame of thought. As far as even something as simple as what to eat for breakfast. They gave you the commercials to tell you what's the best part of uh, your day. You started drinking coffee after you saw that commercial. They, they give you the mindset of how to think, how to operate, and also how to hate each other. They gave you that mindset. Exactly. So the mouth of the serpent is their media, which is misinformation. So they, and their misinformation is, like he said, a weapon of mass destruction. That's what misinformation is. And that's what we've learned here in this country. So back in verse 15 again. Go ahead. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So let's look at this. Look at Ephesians uh, 4.14. Ephesians 4.14. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. That we... Henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate, slate of men. So you see that? Carried away by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. The slight of men, that's their media. That's what we see on TV. Go ahead. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's the white man's media. So the people who decide the information at the press and media outlets are the executive producers, film and news, and editors in chiefs in the magazines. Thank you, Officer Jonah. Those are the ones who dictate what you see, what you hear, what you get in your brain. They're the ones. They're the ones that decide, put this type of a music behind that scene right there. Like you'll see a little... Uh, uh, you'll see a little a bit black child with flies in his eyes, and that's very far and few. And they'll put that, cro that, that violin, send your money, send your money. You send all your money over there, not realizing the Salvation Army and these other places, they take 75% of that money into their pocket. That's what they do. So, verse 15 again says, And a serpent cast out of his mouth, Water, that's deceit as a flood after the woman, after the Israelites, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Watch this. Let me give you some more. Let's go to the article called Red Herring. Red Herring. What is a red herring? Yes, it's a bird, but it's a metaphor as well. Red Herring. Any day now, any day. Oh, yes, it's on Wikipedia. No, that ain't it. It's called Red Herring. Red Herring. 
red herring. Let me look. I sent it. Did I send it to Netramiah? Let me look first before I explode. Yes, I did. I'm looking at it. Yes, I'm looking at it. Oh, Netramiah didn't send it to you. That's what it is. Oh, you did send it to him. Look, he got to type it in now. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, yes. Go down. Red herring. Let's go down. We don't need that high reader thing. Come on, brothers. Right there. Blow it up big so we can see. We don't need that stuff on the left. Uh, who's, uh, can you see that, Officer Tobias? If you can't, we'll have Captain Shemai read it. Yes, sir. I can see it. Oh. Yes, sir. Go ahead. A red herring is something that misleads or distracts from a relevant or important question. A red herring is something that distracts from a what? A relevant or important question. Now, keep going. It may be either. I, I want y'all to write that down, what a red herring is. I know you ain't writing it down. Just write it down. Go ahead. It may be either a logical fallacy or a literary device that leads readers or audiences towards a false conclusion. It will lead you to a false conclusion. Go ahead. A red herring may be used. Let me give an example of a red herring. 9-11 happens, right? Boom, boom, people die, da 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 da, da. Esau wants to get revenge, right? They say, we, what can we do? No, no, let me think, let me think. Oh, oh, they say, I, they got weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass, we got to go in there and take them down because they could annihilate us. They were all Saudis. Right, they were all Saudis, allegedly. Then they go there and guess what? There was no weapons of mass destruction. And that came out after they destroyed, what's his name? Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. So it was before 9-11, so forget 9-11. So this is once they did that, boom, look what it look. Weapons of mass, that's a red herring. They threw that out there, and the, most of America, especially white folks, yeah, rah, 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 America, America, go in there, kill, kill, kill. Then after they do that, it was a ruse to get the oil. They said, oh, we found no weapons of mass destruction. That was a red herring. So, Go back, read that again. A, a red herring may be used intentionally. Go ahead. A red herring may be used intentionally as in mystery fiction or as, a, as part of rhetorical strategies. Rhetorical strategies. Example given in politics. Hmm. Go ahead. Or may be used in argumentation inadvertently. Mm -hmm. The term was popular, popularized in 1807 by English polemists, po polemists, William Cobbett, who told a story of having used a kipper, a strong smelling smoke, smoked fish, to divert hunt, to, di to, to Let me read it, let me read it. To divert hounds from chasing a hare, a, a rabbit. Come on. Lord have mercy. As an informal fallacy, the red herring falls into a broad class of relevant fallacies. Unlike the straw man, which involves a distortion of the other party's position, the red herring is a seemingly plausible, though ultimately irrelevant, diversionary tactic. So now, I'm going to show you an example with Esau's today's red herring. Watch this. Give me the next article. What are black Hebrew Israelites? The article on what are black Hebrew Israelites. Okay, let's blow that one up big. What are black Hebrew Israelites? And you notice they always say that black, throw that in there. You're black. That means you're not the real ones. That's why they put that there. So they, they call themselves Israelis or like they Jewish or Israelites. But they don't say red or white because they know once you do that that means you're fake what are black hebrew israelites the group jersey city shooters were linked to uh officer tobias do you want to read this can you read this 
Solomon, you're going to read? Okay, yes, sir. Come I on. got you. What are black Hebrew Israelites? The group, Jer- the group Jersey City shooters were linked to. The group does. <laughs> the group. No, no, I got it. I'm laughing at y'all. I'm sorry. The group doesn't don't have a significant record of violence as the Anti-Defamation League has been tracking the movement since the late 1970s or early 1980s. Come on. Let's see the article now. Come on. Go down. That's right there. The deadly shooting rampage at a New Jersey kosher market has cast a spotlight on a fringe movement known for its anti-Semitic strain of street preaching and its role in a viral video confrontation at the Lincoln Memorial this year. Now, the term anti-Semitic is a trigger word. There are at least seven to nine Semitic families in the earth. All white people, all of them are Shemitic. From Shem came Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. White people come from Esau. They're all Shemitic. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came from Shem, Noah's son Shem. That includes blacks, uh, Native American Indians, and so-called Latinos. We're all Shemitic. Lot's children also descend from Shem. That's the Chinese and the Japanese. They're Shemitic. Abraham also had uh, children with Hagar. The Arabs are all Shemitic. But because people don't read the Bible, go back, go back, go back to the article. Esau, or I say this so called uh, Amalek, not so called Amalek, Amalek, I'll call them that, so called Jewish people. Use this term anti-Semitic because they know people are ignorant to who the Semites are in the Bible. There's at least seven Shemitic families in the Bible. So this is a fallacy right here. And this is why they don't want us on the news with them. We will hem them up, you damn demons. Read on from investigators. Investigators believe that the man and woman who killed three people at the Jersey City Grocery Tuesday in addition to gunning down a police officer at a cemetery, hated Jews and law enforcement and had expressed interest in the black Hebrew Israelites movement. Notice the expressed interest. Some article said a one time follower. And you had, he had, they, and they didn't show the proof of that at all. Notice they showed no evidence of that at all. So they allege that he came from either the, 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 the the fat group who eats the chicken, the refurbished group, or ICGJC. That's allegedly, but they showed no evidence of it. Go ahead. New Jersey. I'm going to give an example of that. Remember in Vegas, a child got kidnapped, and they called us up and say, we have evidence that you guys are involved in the kidnapping of a child. So we, uh, Officer uh, Gabal was like, what is your evidence? He said, we found a flyer. In the home of the person. He said, we give out thousands of flyers. What are you talking about? This is what they do. You, when you walk down, don't you get the McDonald's? Uh, so do you, if, if somebody comes, do you call McDonald's and say, oh, we found your, your thing in the house? Your pamphlet? Read that. New Jersey Attorney, attorney General Gerber Gruwal said Thursday, but we have not definitely established any formal links to that organization or to any other group. See there? We have not definitely established any formal links. Go ahead. He said, based on the available evidence, we believe that the two shooters were acting on their own. So you know what it's like? You know how we'll put a a post on Facebook or Instagram? Somebody who's not an Israelite says, oh, I like that. Let me share it. Then they go, oh, look, he shared an Israelite thing. He's an Israelite. These idiots. And all of that, right, all of this is a head, red herring. Watch. I'm going to show you. Watch. Not all sects of the movement spew hateful rhetoric, but many black Hebrew Israelites subscribe to an extreme set of anti-Semitic beliefs. We have Shemitic beliefs. We all Israelites have Shemitic beliefs. Go ahead. Those followers view themselves as the true chosen people. That's right. 
and believe that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. He didn't lie there. Go ahead. <laughs> said, or <laughs> said Oren Segal, director of the Anti-Defamation League Center of Extremism. On extremism. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. On extremism. They view white people as agents of Satan. Hey, 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 hey. That's what the Bible says. We just read it. You'd have, they'd have to burn all the Bibles in the world for us not to have that view. Go ahead. Seagal said, they believe Jews are liars. Hey, Revelation 2.9 says that. Revelation 3.9 says that. Go ahead. And false worshipers of God. Mm -hmm. They view mm -hmm. blacks as the true Israelites and not the imposter Jews. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Most who encountered the movement's followers have seen them proselytizing, proselytizing and provoking arguments with passersby. Passers by. Oh, <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it. I got it. Isn't got he it, a rapper? Yes, he's That's a rapper. He's supposed to know words. He's supposed to know hey, some hey, English, brother. Y'all can't tell me y'all like that was hey, passersby. Put the mic down, bro. Put the mic down. Put the mic down. Put the mic down. I'll read it. <sighs> Boy. I'm sorry, Bishop. I'm sorry. All right. It says most who encounter the movement's followers have seen them proselytizing and provoking arguments with passerbys in places like Times Square in New York. Last January, videos of a confrontation at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington probably introduced many people to the movement. A group of black street preachers who referred to themselves as black Hebrew Israelites. Shouted, no, they did not yes. refer to themselves as black. See, he so threw that in there. Yeah. Yeah. They don't refer to themselves as black Hebrew. And the brother that was teaching is Puerto Rican. Yes. The hell is this? Yes, Go ahead. Shouted insults at Native Americans and Catholics. And he was not shouting insults at them. He was telling them he was from the tribe of Gad. Go ahead. I'm and, sorry. <laughs> and Catholic high school students from Kentucky who had participated in an anti-abortion rally in Washington. Videos of a face-to-face -face encounter between a Native American activist and a student wearing a red Make America Great Again hat quickly spread on social media. J.J. McNabb, a fellow at George Washington University's program on extremism, said the black Hebrew Israelites have used Facebook and YouTube to spread their message and attract new followers. Prisons also have been fertile, fertile recruiting grounds for the sex some of which have thousands of members, according to McNabb. Once you go online, you find a bigger world. They take pride in confronting Jewish people everywhere and explaining that they are evil, that they are heathens, McNabb said. See, no lie there. McNabb said the black Hebrew Israelites also include elements of the anti-government sovereign citizen movement. I don't know nothing about that. We, that's, sovereign, that's that group... I don't even know if they call themselves Israelites. If, if they do, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. But they're the ones that say, get rid of your birth certificate, your social security, you get, get, your, driver's get your own driver's license, get your own license plate, it's take the, the number off your house. Them dudes is idiots. Right, but they still use American money. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> McNabb, said, McNabb said the black Hebrew Israelites also include elements of the anti-government sovereign citizen movement which has been linked to deadly attacks on law enforcement officers. There is no purity test, she said, when you're generally radicalizing online. You're going to pick up bits and pieces from all over the place. The Jersey City killers who died during the attack were identified as David Anderson, 47, and Francine Graham, 50. And nobody knows who these two people are. They put their picture. Nobody knows them. Go ahead. An Instagram account that apparently belonged to Anderson shows he was an aspiring rapper. Rapper! Go ahead. Whose post included at least one reference to black Hebrew Israelite philosophy. You see that? One, one reference. One reference. One. Go ahead. So he shared something. Yeah. A uh, hey, list. A list of the 12 tribes of Israel from the Bible with each tribe equated to a modern day ethnic group or country. America has nothing for us but death. A caption or on one of his posts read, the account went dormant a few years ago. So 
the account went dormant and they used that, that one post. So it said he showed it, he, he reposted the 12 tribes chart. Yes, that's what he did. Wow. Go ahead. Or that, that goes to show that once you put something on social media, it never goes away. Right. If the account went dormant years ago, they were still able to dig it up from years ago. Y'all right, right. better be mindful. On Wednesday, the FBI searched the Harlem offices of a major black Hebrew Israelite group, according to a law enforcement official who was not authorized to discuss the case publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Well, I don't anonymity. Know who that is. What, Harlem, what group is in Harlem? Um, that's the, that's, oh yeah, they're in Harlem. Comfy. Right, right. That was comfy in them, right. Israel, wait, wait a minute. According to law, but that, it says on Wednesday, the FBI searched the Harlem office of a major black Okay, on Wednesday. All right. I thought they, remember they searched their office. Before, they did it a couple months, like a year, a year or so ago. Yeah. Go ahead. Israel United in Christ. Uh-oh. A black Hebrew Israelite group. Oh, my God. Go ahead. With more than 40 U.S. locations and a large social media following condemned the attacks. Yes, we do. We condemn the attacks. The Bible said, thou shalt not kill. That's, right. That's what the Bible says. The group said it does not condone nor teach this type of behavior. That's right. Christ said, if at all possible, do what? Be at peace, Be at peace with all men. Go ahead. In October, a self-proclaimed black Israelite was charged with assaulting two people, leaving a prayer service at a synagogue in Miami, according to the, the ADL. The defendant, Larry Green, threatened to stab the worshipers to death, called them fake Jews. And told him to go back to Israel, the ADL said. Now, Citing if we ever find any crazy brothers, we're going to throw you out so quick. You crazy brothers are shooting. If there is, I don't know if there is, but shooting guns, threatening to stab people, violence. We gotta, they got to go. They got to go. Immediately. Not tomorrow. Now. Go ahead. The ADL said, citing an arrest affidavit. But the black... The black Hebrew Israelites don't have a significant record of violence. Very true. Siegel said, noting that the ADL has been tracking the movement since the late 70s or early 80s. Grewal, the attorney general, said authorities are investigating the shootings as potential acts of domestic terrorism, fueled both by anti-Semitism and anti-law enforcement beliefs. Oh, well. So now, this whole thing has been a red herring. Because while all this is going on in the news, give me the next article, Officer Alicia, on Trump. Thank you, Captain Isaac. Give me the next article on our beloved President Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump. Uh, I sent you, was it an article, video? I forgot. Video with it? Okay, let's, let's go to the article and click the video. Is that it? You sure this goes with the article? Because I'm not looking at it. I'm, okay, I'm take your word for it now. Atlanta. An Orthodox Jew beaten in the streets of Brooklyn. Another sucker punch in New York. In Los Angeles, a driver targets Jewish men with his car screaming effing Jews. And exactly six months apart, shooters attacking American synagogues during services with the intent to kill Jews. Pittsburgh last October. Wait, pause it right there. Did y'all notice they showed the two black guys that did something to them right now? But they didn't show the Edomites that shot up. You see how they do this? Uh, they, they, and don't think they're stupid. They are very good with editing. Go ahead. Lives lost in the worst act of anti-Semitic violence in American history. <laughs> Howway in April killing one worshiper. The direct threat against American Jews as victims of vandalism, assault, and even murder is at alarming levels. We're talking some of the highest numbers of incidents that we've ever seen. It's really kind of unfolded itself in a very ugly way. For a third year in a row, the Anti-Defamation League says anti-Semitic incidents in America rose to near historic highs. Again, Each pause it. This anti, if any of y'all, if y'all get into, you've got to bring out, we are Semitic. Stop with the BS, with these trigger words. Go ahead. Of the 1,879 dots, a physical manifestation of hate in 2018. The threat environment today 
is one that we haven't seen in this country in recent memory. George Salim oversees the ADL Center for Extremism. He has also spent more than a decade working to fight extremism and radicalization at the Department of Homeland Security. The growing deadly threat, he says, is homegrown and overwhelmingly far right and white. There's this concept within white supremacist circles of accelerationism. That means that individuals feel like the white race is in danger How and they need video? to act now. The evidence of the growing threat is plain to see. Synagogues now pockmarked with bullet holes. I was sent to oh, me Oh God, get, get to the article. Let's get to the article, please stop. I'm sorry. We get, black people get shot up all the time. All day. Come on, man. Give me the article. Give me the t title of the article. I can't take it. Zoom in a little bit. And too. if you notice, every around every Hanukkah or Passover, something happens with these people. Yes, yes. And they got to get a police escort. Yes. Come on, stop it. Look at, I want y'all, this is why I said that whole thing about the Israelites with the red herring. Look what's going on here. Trump aims to crack down on anti-Semitism on college campuses using civil rights protections. Go down. Zoom in a little bit. Pres President Trump, President Donald Trump signed an executive order an on executive Wednesday. An executive order. That means you cannot override this thing. Go ahead. To include discrimination against Jews as a violation of law in certain cases with an eye toward fighting anti-Semitism on college campuses. It's an order that would allow Trump to take further steps to combat anti-Israel sentiments and divestment movements on college campuses by requiring colleges and universities to treat those movements as discriminatory or risk losing their funding. Or risk losing their funding. So they're going to prevent people from going or teaching on these campuses who don't agree with these people. Go ahead. The order would apply in cases where anti-Semitism is involved and applies only to discrimination concerns. Really? A, a senior administration official told CNN on Wednesday that the order does not define Judaism at all. The order represents a legal judgment that discrimination against Jewish people is sometimes covered by Title VI. A White House official confirmed to CNN on Tuesday that the order would interpret Judaism as a nationality and not just a religion. You see what he's doing? He's making Judaism a nationality now. Before, Judaism was just a religion. Yeah. Now he's saying, so if you speak against Judaism, which is that religion they got, you're speaking against their whole race. And that is discrimination. They can take away school funding. See, and all this, all this was being set up. Meanwhile, look, it's happening over there. They go, look over there. Black Hebrew is right there. Somebody go, ooh, bad, bad, bad. Meanwhile, Trump is over there signing this executive. No one's paying attention to that at all. And this ain't all over he's the making a new nationality. Go ahead. The executive order released on Wednesday was not that specific. The order released Wednesday evening interprets Title VI of Wednesday the evening. Wednesday evening interprets Title VI. Interprets. Interprets. Oh. Uh, Go ahead. Title Go ahead. VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, and national origin in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance as protecting from anti-Semitism. The Department of Education can withhold federal funding from any college or educational program that violates Title VI according to the Civil Rights Act. While Title VI does That's not... That's all I want. So what I'm showing you is that while everyone's focusing on the imaginary black Hebrew Israelite, who's not a Hebrew Israelite at all, He's writing executive orders establishing the Judaism religion as a world nationality through executive orders, okay? That's a red herring. Let's go back to Revelation 12. We're almost done. And verse 15 again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And you know what? When I read it, I'm not stressed about that. You know why? Get Daniel 11:14. Daniel, see, you can write our president, I'm going to say our president, <laughs> can write all the executive orders 
establishing Judaism as a new nationality, all he wants. Because here's what the prophecy says in Daniel 11, verse 14. Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also, the robbers of thy people also, shall... Also, the robbers of thy people, those who stole our land and identity... Shall exalt themselves. They shall exalt themselves as the Jews, as the chosen people. To establish the vision. To establish the vision that they are the Jews, the chosen people. Now you have executive orders to further establish the vision that they are the Jews, the chosen people. But they shall fall. But they shall what? They shall fall. That's the prophecy. They're going to fall. Do you understand that? So I ain't scared, I ain't stressed, and neither should y'all be. The prophecy is already written, they shall fall, every last one of them. Where we at, Cap? Uh, verse 15 again. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So when it says, and the earth helped the woman, give me that in Psalms 85, 11, please. The earth helped the woman. The earth helped the woman. Psalms chapter 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. You see that? Truth shall spring out of the earth. What? Meaning what? This Bible is going to be taught throughout the earth. The Bible is the earth that's helping the woman. Everybody understand that? Remember the, who the woman is? The woman with 12 stars on her head represents the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible is helping us. Read verse 16 again. Revelation 12, 16. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth. The Bible opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The Bible is what swallows every lie that comes out of the mouth, out of the media of the dragon. Everybody understand that? So the Bible is what swallows up lie after lie after lie. And they can't take it. They are mad, you know. Give me that in Deuteronomy 33, 29. Yep. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. You see what it says? Thine enemies shall be found what? Liars unto thee. Everything the media puts out is a lie, is a lie, is a lie. Was that it? And thou shalt tread upon their high places. See, that, that's when we get that power. We ain't doing nothing now. We can't do nothing now. All we can do is be at peace with everybody. Just sit back. Just read the scriptures. Apply the scriptures. That's our power. Go back to Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse And 17. you know what's funny about the, uh, well, it ain't funny, but I was thinking about the shooting, right? Mm. It's a horrible incident. We don't condone it at all. In fact, we condemn it. But notice when white people shoot up uh, synagogues or schools, they say, oh, the shooter suffered from schizophrenia. Uh, men some kind of mental disorder, yeah. something mental. But with black people, I want you blacks and Latinos to understand that. When our people uh, lose their mind, they don't say nothing about, oh, he or she suffered from some, like the couple that just got gunned down. Yes. I didn't hear no report that they suffered from any kind of mental disorder. No, sir. But let me show you what the Bible says. Give me that in Deuteronomy 30, I mean 28. Deuteronomy 28, I forgot the verse. Yes. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. You know what that means? Mental disorders. Like uh, Gil Noble was just talking on all the, the video we showed. He made mention of post-traumatic slave disorder based upon the teachings and writings of Professor Joy DeGruy. D-E-G-R-U-Y. Yeah. This sister's heavy. When it comes to 
the mental, uh, mental disorders of black people from the time of slavery, and we have never received any type of uh, uh, treatment for the things, the atrocities we've gone through, rehabil any kind of real rehabilitation, it's not talked about in the black or Latino community. Yes, but white people, anytime they go through something, oh, they have a mental disorder because they went through this in their lives. Well, what about what we've gone through, what we've seen? Nah, nigga, you okay. That's how they treat us. But the Bible, the word of God says about our people. Read verse 28 again. And this is why some of you brothers be trapped up with some of these crazy sisters and some of you crazy, some of you sisters trapped up with some of these crazy brothers. Here's the verse. This is what you're going through. Read that again. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. That means half of us are crazy. Half of us are insane in the membrane. Go ahead. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. That word heart translates to mind. We are mentally unstable. A lot, not all of us, but a large portion of us. Okay. Back to Revelation 12. We're almost done. Last verse. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. With the Israelites. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We're going to see more things like we're witnessing here with those two shooters that gunned down the police and those other three people. We're going to see more alleged things happening, and they're going to blame the Israelites, blame the kidnappings, blame the Israelites, blame the Israelites, okay? And this is why when things occur in the body through our IUIC congregations, we must respond quickly and speedily especially if it's a detriment to any brother or sister in the body or even in the world. we got to respond quickly. Why? The media is waiting for one of us, like the thing with uh, the sister that uh, passed away, and I think yeah. there was some funny business behind that. Because yeah. where they found her body, they said that was a popular uh, uh, track of when people jog. Okay. And nobody smelled nothing. Nobody smelled a rotting, rotting corpse there. All that time, she was there for months and months, and nobody smelled nothing. Nobody saw nothing. No, you know how dogs run to things like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Not one dog ran over there, but all of a sudden, boop, oh, we found her. Look. Hmm. IUIC member. I'm like, really? Something doesn't sound right to me. But that's for another story. So to every captain and deacon, we must respond quickly and speedily because there's crazy men and women among us who are determined on bringing us down from within. We can't let that happen. We cannot let that happen. I want to add something to that. Uh, all, you, all your brothers and sisters, all you, especially the leaders, listen, I under, sometimes I understand your brothers or sisters might get, get together in your house. You might decide to go to a restaurant. You do whatever. But listen, when you get together, you take those pictures together, do not put them on social media and put IURC behind it. Do not do that. Some of you put, take pictures of you with a weapon or whatever. Or you go, let's go, you go on social media, oh, let's go to the shooting range. Let's do this. Listen, IUIC have nothing to do with that. You want to act stupid? Be stupid by yourself. I'm just telling you straight. Stop putting stuff, pictures on social media like IUIC has something to do with it. We have nothing to do with that. You invite people to your house or do something stupid and take pictures, take videos, and put it on social media. They are monitoring this stuff. Let and me you guys put IUIC like, IUIC have something to do with it. No, we have nothing to do with that. Let me explain why. Get second, here's a scripture. 2 Corinthians 6 and 3. We all got uh, things we may do, leisure time, whatever. But Deacon, is, uh, Deacon Malachi is warning you. The media is waiting to take those images and videos to malign this truth. Here's the evidence right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse, verse three. 3. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. See that? Because their goal is to blame the ministry. They're not going to say Tyrone did it. They're going to say Israel United in Christ member. That's what they're going to do. Like, what was the Edomite that blew up the FBI? What's his name? Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. He went to church, 
But they, to this day, it's hard to find out what church he went to. They just, you got to dig, dig, dig and find out he was a Christian, but they won't say his church name or nothing like that. But when an Israelite does something, Israel United in Christ member does such and such news at 11. That's what they do. And everybody's like, oh, Israel United, bad, bad. You're all evil. Cult, cult, cult. This is why we warn you, if you're doing anything, like he said, mentioned going to gun ranges and all, don't put Israel United in Christ on those things. I'm sure a lot, this is a carry, you can open carry out here. Go to the range if you want, fine. And if you have guns, that's okay, as long as it's legal. You gotta have legal, right? Don't go, Israel United in Christ, here's the logo. Don't do that, because they're waiting to get us on anything. Watch this, second Ezra, red herring, red herring. I'm going back to that red herring we discussed. So next to your, to the, in your notes, Right, red herring here in First Esdras, chapter five, verse seventy-two and seventy-three. Red herring. First Esdras, chapter chapter five, verse seventy-two. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. Hindered their building, and guess what? Although it was a physical building back then, today this is a spiritual. Building. Where's that scripture in Peter where it says uh, building up the great spiritual house? Two and five. Give me that. First Peter two. I'm I'm precepting it with this one. First Peter's two and five. Is that the right scripture? Read that. Then we're coming back to Ezra. First Peter's chapter two, verse five. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. See that we're built up a spiritual house. Now I'm using that to precept with first Ezra five. Go back there, 572. But so although in First Ezra was talking about a physical building, now it's talking about a spiritual building with First Peter 2 and 5. Read it again. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. And by their secret plots. And by what? By their secret plots. Secret plots. Secret plots. So don't get it twisted. These red herrings are popping up left and right. They're all secret plots, okay? Like the thing with the, the MAGA, with the American Indian, and you had the brother, I think his name is uh, Ephraim. Um, Chief Ephraim. Chief Ephraim, right. The, that had nothing to do with him, but they tried to flip it on him. He's out there teaching. The Edomites approached the Gadite to, 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 to mock, mock him, yeah, yeah. and then they go, oh, black Hebrew Israelite does this. And the brother, each chief even had nothing to do with it at all. But they tried to do that. So read that again, verse 73. Watch this. Verse 73. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. That's their media. Their media is a popular persuasion. Why? Because most people believe what they see on TV, what they see on the news. I believe it. Don't. Read it again. And by their secret plots. And popular persuasions and commotions. They try to stir up a commotion to get people against us. Go ahead. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Saul. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. But guess what? They're not going to hinder this. This is going to keep going on and on. Everybody understand that? Until Christ returns. So in Revelation 12, 17, once again, I'm sorry. Go back there again. We are you know, I'm not going to do a four-hour class. Like I've been hearing Deacon Ithan and <laughs> Deacon Malachi and, I'm be, and Asaph be doing four or five-hour classes. Like Deacon Yawsop was doing. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> I, I said, you know how people got a short attention span? They ain't retaining half that stuff y'all went over. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we're in the midst of prophecy right now. Now, let me explain this. Let me explain it in detail. Although that's one verse, I'm going to show you step by step how it's occurring. Go to Isaiah 13, 1 and 2. Watch this. Why is this dragon so raw? Remember what it said in chapter, I mean, chapter 12, verse 9. It said the devil knows he got a short time. He knows. Why does he know he has a short time? Remember the interview I did with the Edomite cast yes, bound? Sir. He said, he asked me, well, when is Christ returning? I said, I don't know. It says, you know, you got to look at the signs of the time. He already knew that. They are watching Israel rise. 
And as they see men, and remember, he was shocked about the women. Because yeah. he knows how hard it is for a black woman to be in order with God's laws. That's the, one of the most difficult things on the planet Earth, yes, to get them to do what this Bible says. Yeah. It comes to shaking their junk, they can do that. Yeah. Cursing you out, calling you a b, b nick nigger, she can do that too. But to love her husband, love her children, that's a hard thing. All praises. He says, well, look at the women. They're, they're getting in order with that Bible? Yes. That's right. Yes. You women should give yourselves a hand for that thing. That's right. See, some of these women, they clap, and they're like, they do. I don't know if I should clap at that or not. <laughs> I think he got some kind of slick comment in there. No, I don't. I didn't mean nothing by that. So Isaiah 13, verse 1 and 2. We're almost done. We're almost done. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amaz did see. So the burden of Babylon is the burden of America. Watch this. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. The, bur the banner of is the Bible. Lift this up upon the high mountain. Babylon is the highest mountain on the earth, meaning what? The greatest nation on earth. You know, when we were in Uganda and Sierra Leone, you know how many people want to come to America? Yeah. They believe yeah. that the, it's paved with streets of gold. And money, they think money grows on trees. No, brother, you have the wrong. Even in menaces, they say, God showed me a vision. I'm going to a, the United States of America. Praise Jesus. And they clap and applaud, not realizing that this is mystery. Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. So read that again. Verse 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. This is what we're doing. As we lift up the Bible, we're exalting the voice. Go ahead. Shake the hand. When you shake the hand, you're rebuking, you're correcting the people. Go ahead. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That's what I wanted y'all to see right there. The effect of us teaching the Bible and our people not wanting to be corrected, not wanting to change their lives, causes them to go into the gates of the nobles. I'm going to the congressmen. I'm going to the senators. I'm going to the mayors, the governors. I'm going to the president against you Israelites. I don't want to live a godly life. I don't want to live a disciplined life. I like a carefree life. Do what I want. Feel how I want. So that's what's happening right there. They're going into the gates of the nobles. And guess what? They said these people are not breaking laws. They have freedom of religion. Well, Harry, what can we do about that? We got to come up with some secret plots against them. You know, that's the only way we can get them to stop. We got to send in informants, agents amongst them, men and women, to turn to uh, to expose or bring them down from within. Make them look violent. Make them seem crazy. That's what they're doing. Okay. From there, watch this. In the Apocrypha, Esther. I'm showing you step by step of things, chain of events. Esther chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. In the Apocrypha. Verse 4 and 5. I know you're tired. That's why I ain't going to keep you out here too long. The book of Esther, chapter 13, in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, verse 4. Declared unto us. Now this is Haman, a, 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 a Caucasian. Haman, an Edomite, speaking to the Persian rulers. Go ahead. That in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered certain malicious people. He's telling the Persian king about the Israelites. He said, throughout all the world, there is scattered as certain malicious people. Go ahead. That had laws contrary to all nations. They have these different sets of laws, different than all nations on earth. And continually despise the commandments of kings. And they despise whatever man says, they go against what man says. That's the commandment of kings. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So it's hindering the Persian Empire and the Greek Empire from unifying. Go ahead. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. They said, so he says, these Israelites, because that's who he's talking about, are in continual opposition to all men. Go ahead. Differing in the strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state. See that? Deferring in their strangeness of their laws and what? 
evil affected to our state. In evil affected to our state. Read that again. The first part above it, before it. Differing in the strange manner of their laws. You know now they're making laws to say that circumcision is barbaric, not to get your son circumcised. Whatever we teach in the Bible, Esau is trying to make laws to go against it. Lerapati took his daughter to a gynecologist yes. to make sure she's still a virgin because he does not want her living a promiscuous life. Oh, that's evil. And that's, guess what? They got a table of black women yes, to it. bring him on the show yeah. to make him apologize yeah. and to say how he was wrong for that. I'm like, are you kidding me? See, this is how they like to use our people in the media because Esau don't want to do it himself because they know what we'll say. You're racist. So they say, we got to find some of the most ignorant black and Latin men and women who will do the Damn. dirty work for us and humiliate them. That's what they do. Did you finish that? No, sir. Go ahead. And evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can. Working all, see that? Working all. What is the mischief that we were working? Teaching the Bible. Go ahead. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. Mm, now watch this. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 10. We're going to read down. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 10. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 10. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us, this is what Esau says, the nations. Let us, oh, and wicked Israelites say the same thing. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Go ahead. Let us not spare the widow. Don't spare the widow. Nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Mm -hmm. Let our strength be the law of justice. Watch this. Let our strength be the law of justice. Remember in Psalms, I believe it's 64, it says they frame mischief yes. by laws. Yes, sir. Let our strength be the law of justice. This is why Esau, he set up laws forbidding us to read and write. He did that thing. That way they could help perpetuate the lie that we are nothing more than Hamites and that Jesus Christ is a European. Why? Because he set up laws forbidding us to read and write. That's one of the beginnings of it. Okay? So he kept, kept us in an ignorant state. So now that we can read, some of us choose to remain ignorant, but those of us who, who are in the Bible, we can show the truth. Hence is the problem. Now they're making laws against um, circumcision. They're making laws where you have to be vac. New York now, you must, your children must be vaccinated or they have to get out of school. Once your children are not in school for X amount of time, guess what happens to the parents? They go to jail. They go to jail. New York is going through that right now. Okay, California got the law already set up in Cali. You must be vaccinated. Vaccinated. Read. Let, our, Let strength our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doing. That's what Haman was telling the Persian king. It says, he is clean contrary to our doings. Why? Because we try to live a disciplined life, a civil and moral life. We try to the best of our abilities. Go ahead. He upbraideth us with our offending the law. Remember, John the Baptist said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Remember, I think his brother was Philip. I forgot who his brother was. That's the top, top of my head. But anyway, Herod was pissed. Why? Because John gave the law. And our job with all the nations, give them the, this is what the law says. No matter, listen, remember what Christ said, not to teach any man. To break the commandments. We are not justified by telling the Chinese to break the law. We're not justified teaching them that. We're not justified telling Esau to break the law. Everybody is going, must keep the, does everybody understand that thing? Christ said, if you teach men to break the least commandment, you shall be called the least. That's why John the Baptist said to the white man, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Who's, what was his brother? Philip, Philip was his brother, to have your brother's wife. Yes, sir. So wonder, why did he tell the Edomite that? Because it's our job to tell everybody, you better keep the commandments. Because <laughs> guess what? In the kingdom, with all the servants we have, guess what we're going to force them to do? Keep the, keep the commandments. Read on. And objective to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. Mm -hmm. 
He professes to have the knowledge of God. That's what we profess. We have the knowledge of God. We have the truth. Go ahead. And he called himself the child of the Lord. That's who we are, the child of the Lord. Go ahead. He was made to reprove our thoughts. So we was made to reprove the thoughts of these nations. Go ahead. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. They hate to look at us. <laughs> this is why when they see the black image of Jesus in the Bible, it grieves them. We don't want no big lip, wide nose, kinky head, Jesus. Hell no! Change that thing. What? Sure. You remember that video they put up of Amalek in the restaurant, and there was a sister sitting down, and he oh, walks yes. up and spit in her face? He like threw up yes. on her. He threw yes. up on her. Yes. So same thing, like you just brought out right here. They yep. can't stand us. They One hate our guts. Yeah. Exactly. Read 15 again. Verse 15. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. That's right, because we keep the law. Watch this. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. So when we say that they're imposters, that's what the Bible calls them, counterfeits. You're not the real Jews, Esau. That's You're right. not an Israelite. You are a counterfeit, an imposter, a convert. Read that again. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. Mm. He pronounced the end of the just to be blessed mm -hmm. and maketh his boast that God is his father. From there, go to 1 oh, Peter 4. That's right. God is our father. We're going to close out here. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4 and 14, please. The book of 1 Peter. Oh, I'm going almost two and a half. I'm almost catching up with I thought. Let me hurry up now. <laughs> verse Peter <laughs> 4, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. So if we be reproached for the name of Christ being in this truth, we're supposed to be happy and rejoice. Oh, I don't know if y'all know, uh, you know, the brother in uh, North Carolina that was the police officer, the lieutenant, they terminated him. Yes, sir. So, brother, where's the camera? Brother, rejoice because you're being reproached for the name of Christ. And, brother, here's our information for you. Sue, brother, sue. Right. Get every penny you can That's get right. from them demons. Every dime you can get. Read that again. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. That's right. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Right. So they speak evil of us, but guess what? The Lord is glorified. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. So we don't want to hear, oh, I'm being reproached for Jesus. I'm being reproached for Christ, and you're a murderer. No. It says, let none of you suffer as a murderer. Why? Because the law says, thou shalt not kill. That's God's law. Go ahead. Or as a thief. Or as a thief. I'm in jail because I'm suffering for Christ. No, you're in jail because you're a thief. You were caught stealing. Or as and the a, law says, thou shalt not yeah. steal. Go ahead. Or as an evildoer. Or, and that includes anything. Or as an evildoer. I, I was just checking my daughter. Listen, you put your what? Where with your daughter? You need to go to jail. That's right. We ain't going to put you. You're a pedophile. We're going oh, we to come down on you with both feet and an elbow. We're coming down on you. Don't think we're going to. We're not going to support that. So it says, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Or don't suffer as a busybody being nosy in other men's matters. Go ahead. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian. So, you know what, when people say, oh, you're a Christian, that don't insult me because it's right there in the Bible. The, the word Christian simply means anointed. If you suffer as being the anointed, go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed for being reproached for being God's anointed. We are the true Christians. We are the anointed of the Lord. All of us, every man and woman in here. Go ahead. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Mm -hmm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So when we expect things to happen to in this truth. We expect it. Tribulation's going to come. It says we shall through much tribulation enter the kingdom. That's what it means. And if, if it says for the time, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. 
We are the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. The Bible says we shall scarcely be saved. Remember what we read in Revelation 12? It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Okay. And by the word of their testimony. That's what it's going into here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. Go ahead. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So that righteous scarcely be saved. You know why? We right, scarcely going to make it. What we read earlier in Galatians 5. What verse was that? Verse 17? Six, 17. Where it says uh, the spirit is lusteth contrary. against the flesh and a lust. Get that for me. I'm sorry. You know I messed up a scripture. Galatians 5. What's the verse above it? What does it say above that? Thank you, Cap. Appreciate it. 16, you want me to start at 16? No. 17. 17. Galatians 5, no, I 17. Start at 16. You might 16. Well. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. This is why we're going to scarcely make it. We are, it's a constant battle within our mind. To do righteousness or unrighteousness. To keep the law or break the law. To live a disciplined life or a carefree life. It's a constant battle. From when you wake up to when you go to sleep. Even in your dreams, there's a battle. You know you have them dreams with the big butt woman walking by? <laughs> And you waking up, oh, shoot. And your wife is like, what was you dreaming about? Never mind. Mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant struggle. That's why we shall scarcely be saved. It's a constant battle. So we're in this fight, brothers. We're in this fight, sisters. Go back, I, and then we can close it out with that. First Peter 4 again? Yeah. Uh, verse 18. 18 again. First Peter chapter 4, verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So brothers, sisters, let's do as this said. Let's commit ourselves to the keeping of our souls in well-doing, which means keeping the commandments. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. All praises to the Lord. I pray that you, brothers and sisters, got something out of today's lengthy lesson. Not as lengthy as I thought, though. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> hey, we're not, we're not doing um, new people, right? We're not doing that anymore, right? Oh. Right. So, brothers and sisters, we're online. When y'all are bringing up, when the new people come, let's do it offline. Don't do it on camera because you have many people that are coming in and they have certain jobs and positions that may be in jeopardy by them being associated with us. So let's not swing the cameras around on them. Everybody understand that? All right. All praise. All right. All praise. Let's go through the announcements real quick. Well, Let's go through the, the announcements real quick. Okay, so let's let's do the videos then. Um, I believe we got two videos from Original Royalty. All right, let's let's do the videos. All right, Second Kings. This we have a new album on Original Royalty by Second Kings. The album is dropping tonight, and here's the video. Let's go. Niggas fall every day, B. We gon' hold the line. 
Who'd have thought that these seeds would be so divine? Purging out the thorny kind who call themselves upright. Well, I'ma just call them Pinocchios. Lord knows these lines don't kid yourself. We the only ones you look at still on the block with no pushback and crushing doctors with book bags. Counterattack. Your balancing act actually looks bad, please. I can't believe that y'all down to combat for foot tags. We need every day, all year, not just sometimes. No waking up to the new moon to fall asleep to the sunrise and hocus pocus to young minds. But what I did learn is most true. This is to run out of juice, your fruits to get sun-dried. Let's listen that. Let's listen that. They got to see the rest of that at the concert. That's right. How many of y'all going to buy tickets to go to the concert? The first original royalty recordings concert in the ATL. Don't clap. Raise your hands if you're going to get tickets. All praise. Come see me after, <laughs> after class. Let's get the second video. You shoot me down in the street. Hold up. I came with many with D. Yeah. 144 D. D. Man, I done came with a fleet. Fleet. Got all my brothers with me. Yeah. I know you smelling the feet. Uh. I know you smelling the feet. Uh. You gonna be kissing my feet. Yeah. All of my brothers gonna eat. eat. All of my brothers elite. Yeah. Yeah, I be facing the east. All right, all right. That's enough. That's enough. All praise. All praise. All praise. All praise. And just imagine, y'all can see all the original royalty recording artists at the concert Sunday. So come see me and get them tickets, all right? All praises. And correct me if I'm wrong, officer, the ticket prices has been slashed, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slashed to $40. So there should be no reason you ain't got two 20s in your pocket to give to go to the concert. There should be no hey, reason. Hey, Cap, listen. Every single brothers and sisters in ATL should be at this concert. That's right. It's, listen, it's going to look real bad. For you got people coming out of state and you here in Atlanta, you're not there. Shame on you. I'm telling you, it's going to look real bad, man. We got to represent. We got to represent. They're doing it in ATL for a reason, just in case you don't know. There's a reason behind it. I ain't going to tell you why. There's a reason behind it. They pick it here for a reason. And your brothers, come on, man. You're making me and the captain look real bad right now. I better show up and show out. Your brothers got to show up, man. Come on. And, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, Officer Nechamaya, uh, there's no age limit for the children. Is there an age limit? No age limit. Bring your children out just like we do on the feast nights. Bring your children on out. Come on. Tell hey, me see how y'all got it popping here last night? Y'all there, man. You're, you're from it here. You see how we do here. Imagine what's going to happen over there. Come on, man. We got to support. We got to support, brothers. We got to support. In the world, you support in the world. Now we in Israel. Come on. You got to support. $40, man. Come on. You got to support, brothers. Support. Buy the tickets tonight. We got to support. I know, I know what some of you are going to do. You're going you're gonna to come to the door. And I'm going to stand right there, too. And you know, don't give me that poppy face when you show up. I'm going to tell you, nope. Turn around and get a new car. Come on, brothers. We got to, sisters, you too. We got to support. All right? Let's come out. Right. And this is all in righteousness, y'all. This is, this is not a wicked concert in the world. This is all in righteousness. So make sure we all show up and show out. All right? Hey, hey, hey. There's a reason they didn't choose Oklahoma. All right? Uh oh, uh oh, bring it out, bring, bring it out, deep, br bring it out. Where is, where is the cap in the um captain? All right, uh, now let's go ahead and let's play that Passover promotional video. Passover 2020, we're at Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ bless. Captain Soraya here from IUIC Concord. As a reminder, Passover 2020 is being held, that's right, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you know it's going to be live. Leadership is going to be on deck from bishop down to the captain. And that's just the beginning. 
every single thing from Passover 2020 will be on point. The Passover Lamb, Entertainment, the Fashion Show, and much, I say much, much more. All oh, praises. I can't wait. Not to mention the Carolina's very own radio show, The Bible, Book of Our Fathers, will air live. If you haven't already, reach out to your camp leaders for the registration info. Get registered, and we'll see you there. That's my time, Israel. With that, I say shalom. Okay, all praise, all praise, all praise. How many of y'all knew about the early bird promotion for the Passover? All right. What we're going to do is we're going to pick the first two winners, and those first two winners will have their Passover registration fees refunded. I don't know if they understand. Do they understand? Say it again. I, say it in Swahili. You got to say free. You got to say the word free in there. They don't understand that refunded thing. So in other words, that means you'll be going to the Passover for free. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Netramaya, never do that voice again. Ever again in your life. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to spin this thing right here. Spin it around and around. So they got all the names on there. Hold that, Amaziah. So got this, we're going to get it on the camera so y'all know we ain't cheating. Oh, he got favorites. That's why they did that thing. <laughs> it ain't all the same name. All right. Here we go. All right. How did it do? All right. Damn. Sorry. You gonna put it back and do it again? Yeah. They gonna say they did that on purpose. I know how black people are. All right, we're gonna go around and around and around and around and around. All right. All right. All right. Now I'm gonna pull the first one I see right here. Vicky Scott. Vicky Scott. And the next one I'm gonna reach in. Uh, who is this? Benjamin Robinson. Benjamin Robinson. All praises. So they go free. They go free for the Passover. All praises to the Lord. All right, all praises. Um, announcements? Anything else? Oh, okay. All artists, here's a quick announcement. All artists wanted to perform for Passover, send MP3s to IUIC Music Department at gmail.com. All right? If you want to perform for Passover, email your MP3s, your music, to IUIC Music Department at gmail.com. All right, announcements. Y'all going to put it on the screen? Okay. All right. So with that, anything else? Sorry, Bishop. Everybody got bread and wine? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Everybody got bread and wine, correct? First Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Your blood is ready. Israel, are you ready? Faith, patient, salvation. The truth. Faith, patient, salvation. The truth. Who am I? An Israelite. Who am I? An Israelite. Who am I? Him an Israelite. What time it is? Time. What time it is? World time. Now, finally, my brothers. Be strong the Lord and the power of his might. His what? His might. His what? His might. His what? His might. His what? His might. 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 His